It's your boy, T-Money, back at it with the Never Lit Live reaction, man. Today we're reacting on the reason why the game is not respected anymore. So we're going to just get right into it. You already know who the game, you know what I'm saying, Compton Rapper, you know what I'm saying, used to be on G-Unit, beefing with everybody from Jay-Z to Eminem to the 50 Cent. And the whole G unit. So we're going to get right into it and see why, you know what I'm saying, he's really not respected anymore. Hawk, but it's not you. <laughs> People accuse the game of trying to deceive his followers. When confronted about it on Vlad TV, he claimed that he never intended to trick anyone and simply wanted to show appreciation for Tupac, whom he considers one of the greatest. So uh, if you all know what uh, happened, there was a picture that he posted up. And basically, he photoshopped somebody that really took a picture with Pop and put his head on there and try to, you know, say cap to his uh, followers. Rappers ever. However, the damage to his credibility was already Look. done. There he goes right there. Look at it. Cap to your followers. You know, what I'm saying you know that you ain't trustworthy for, you know, what I'm saying like on like a business sense, like if 50s out there rocking with you, Dre out there rocking with you, then you're going to sit there and just be capping like that. Come on now. To his credibility was already done. Then there's the ever changing story of how many times he got shot. It's like he can't keep his story straight, which only adds to the skepticism. And, and, and that's another thing. He tried to keep up with 50 and shit, you know? How many how many times 50 got shot? Like nine times? You know what I'm saying? When it first started, he said it was talking that he got shot like five. And then he said he got shot like ten. So he just trying to one-up 50 <laughs> real quick. I'll get a pop, you feel me? around him over the years the details of these stories have changed making it difficult for fans and critics alike to discern the truth then there was the incident where he oh hey don't get me wrong this man do be spitting like uh still to this day i have a freestyle reaction i'm gonna uh, post that um you know on the game and that was one of the hardest freestyles you know what I'm saying but he, you know what I'm saying, it kind of seemed like he just, the only way he's trying to stay relevant is like beef with all these people. But when he has talent, his first album, even though 50, you know what I'm saying, Ali ooped it to him, it, it was one of the hardest albums out there. That's a classic album, you know what I mean? That's a classic album. Claimed that Kanye West did more for him in a few weeks than Dr. Dre did throughout his career. When you see games say, yo, Dre never did nothing for me. I remember Dre being in the studio and giving you them hits, bro. This statement was not only controversial, but also blatantly false, considering that Dr. Dre is the very reason the game's career took off in the first place. Without Dre's mentorship and influence, it's unlikely that the game would have reached the heights he did. Such statements undermine the contributions of those who played pivotal roles in his success and make him appear ungrateful and disingenuous. You heard him say Kanye did more for, more for me in the last two weeks than Dr. Dre did my entire career, right? I interpret that as him being vulnerable. I interpret that as him lying. In addition, yeah, he 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 do be lying. Incredible to me. Back in 2003, 50 Cent shook the entire industry with the release of his debut. To remember, 50 gave him his whole his first album was supposed to be his. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He gave him like six songs. Took his took himself off six songs to put him on. J Jimmy Iovine was like, "Yeah, go ahead, slice my boy up real quick." New album, Get Rich or Die Trying, as Eminem's protege, Dr. Dre, seeing 50 Cent's success, decided it was time to bring up an artist of his own. That same year, Dre discovered a kid handing out mixtapes throughout Compton and decided to sign him to Aftermath. The rapper was the game. Dr. Dre worked in the studio with the game for several months, but it wasn't until August of 2003 that the game and 50 Cent finally linked up in the studio. They collaborated on a track called So Hard for the June at Radio 3's Taking It to the Streets mixtape which marked the game's G-Unit debut on Wax. After several months of trying to generate buzz for the game, music executive Jimmy Iovine came up with an idea that would skyrocket the game's career. Since no, Summer tight. Jam in 05, where the game infamously dissed 50 Cent and the rest of G-Unit. He threw his G-Unit chain into the crowd, declaring that he was officially out of the group. This marked the beginning of the game's anti- That's disrespectful, though. He threw your- he threw- the G-Unit chain 
that 50 blessed them with. So he threw it back to New York like, here, take that. <laughs> Tai G unit campaign. Look. Had that. Had that. Shake the fuck out of And I got love for New York. Now play my See, that's around that time. That's when he was coming out talk, talking about how the he was G U not. You know what I mean? Because I think he got he was getting hit with cease to desist from Fifty for kept saying anytime he said G unit. So he's like came out with the G U not. So I mean he is smart though, and he can't come out with you know what I mean all these little wild and antics. You know what I'm saying? Any publicity, good publicity. That's what they say, right? Just a few weeks later, the game dropped the You Know What It Is Volume 3 mixtape, which was heavily focused on dissing 50 Cent. This mixtape included the legendary track 300 Bars and Runnin', a 15-minute onslaught where the game mercilessly tore apart 50 Cent and the rest of G-Unit. In response, 50 Cent released the Piggy Bank music video in August, featuring a depiction of the game as Mr. Potato Head. 50 Cent also did an interview with Tim Westwood where he discussed the Hot 97 incident and elaborated on why they were beefing. The game situation was disappointing to me you know I put so much time and energy into that project I worked hard on that project man I I, I recorded six records on that album come back and appear to be unappreciative was incredible to me the streets are saying that the documentary was better than the right. massacre which it is and uh, 50 guys damn that's a bold statement right there that's a, that's what I'm talking about you know, like he said, 50 said he was unappreciative. He didn't appreciate the alley oop. You know what I'm saying? The assist. You know what I mean? He put, he basically put you in the game. He skyrocketed you into the game. You know what I'm saying? He, he probably named you the game. <laughs> and that's all you did was run game on his ass. That's wild. I got jealous and mm. kicked me out of G on it. And he thought that he could do what he did to Ja Rule to me. He's a jealous little girl, man. He did end Ja Rule career. And he was coming for your neck. I mean, you 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 kind of stayed in it. The game kind of stayed, you know, more relevant uh, for longer than uh, you know. Murder Inc. and uh, Ja Rule did, cause like you know, Ja Rule, Murder Inc. They was running the game for a minute, and once uh, Fifty came through. You know, you don't hear, you don't never hear Ja Rule no more. You know what I mean? You never hear, you don't hear Irv, Ja Rule, none of them, you know what I'm saying, from that camp, for none of them from Murder Inc., you know? He's that what happened? Yeah, he's jealous, and somebody needs to braid his ponytail and put him back in his skirt, because, I mean, he's obviously off his rocker. Of Doctor's Advocate in 06, just a year after his debut, he managed to deliver a stellar album without Dre's guiding hand or 50 Cent's contributions, proving to the world that he could stand on his own. Despite the public fallout, it turns out that Dre and the game maintained a healthy relationship behind the scenes. By the time the Red Album was released in 2011, the game revealed that Dre was still giving him vital feedback. Dre always told me, no matter what happens, no matter what is said in the media, me and you are always going to be the same as we were the last time. See, and he kept a real OG, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. He, he put you in the game. He put you in the game. And he he knows y'all was going back and forth on, on the media, but it's like, look, behind the scenes, you still the little homie. You know what I mean? Dr. Dre said, beside the scenes, you still the little homie. Time we had an in-person conversation. For years, the game's loyalty to Dr. Dre remained unshaken. Despite no longer being officially signed to him, the game showed an unwavering commitment to Dre, unlike anything he had exhibited for anyone else in the industry. He admitted there were tense moments between them, but his gratitude always overshadowed the friction. In interviews, he often boasted about his ability to call Dre at a moment's notice. However, if he tried to make that call today, it would likely go unanswered. The game has systematically ruined his ties with Dr. Dre in the entire aftermath family. His downfall could have been avoided if he hadn't been so controlled by emotion in an industry that demands strategy and careful thought. When Dre released the Compton LP and the game appeared on only one track, some fans found it odd. However, the situation became Dang. Yes, that, that, ain't that where you from? Hey, game, ain't that where you from? Ain't you from Compton? How you got, how you was only on one track? The big homie put a, a whole Compton CD out and you only on one track. I would have been mad too. I would have been tight. I ain't gonna lie. More glaring when Dre was set to oversee the Super Bowl halftime show in 2022. It was expected that Dre would perform a career. And it's always a Super Bowl, Bowl con 
controversy. You know what I mean? Because look, so you got first you got you got right now or back then it was when you know what I mean. Uh, Dre brought out Fifty, Eminem, uh, Snoop, everybody, and he felt a certain type of way because he th thought that he should he brought everybody from L.A. out. And you don't bring out the game, and you know, again, I would have felt, I would have felt a little tight then too. Just like right now, they, you know, Jay Z don't want, you know, Lil Wayne to be on the Super Bowl, uh, and want Kendrick Lamar to do it. But watch what I say. I call it. I got Kendrick bringing out Lil Wayne, and maybe even. Drake, uh, Drake and squashing the beef, but you know what I mean. It's an early take. That's my uh, prediction. Team Money's prediction. You did. Spanning set featuring many artists he had mentored. On the big night, he brought out Snoop Dogg, Eminem, Anderson Pack, Kendrick Lamar, and 50 Cent. Meanwhile, the game was left on the sidelines watching from his own city. Initially, the game kept things civil and acted unbothered by the snub. However, knowing his mindset, it seemed only a matter of time before his true feelings spilled out. Eventually, he admitted that it did get to him. It just wouldn't have happened. LA, 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 all around the Super Bowl, and I don't get the call. Dre didn't do any beats on a documentary, but I didn't say he didn't oversee it. This admission flipped a switch. Damn, and see that's what it was. If if he said that on the uh, uh, the Jink Champs, I remember that that episode. I think he crushed the whole bottle of the Azul joint. That bottle right there, right next to him. I think he he punished that joint, took that to the head, threw that joint back. If I if I am not mistaken. So, you know, he probably was lit, talking off his ass, you know what I mean? Talking, you know what I'm saying, in his feelings, in his bag, it was, it was talking big shit. It's opening the floodgates for the game to cross a line he had never crossed before, discrediting Dr. Dre. The rapper, who had once penned a heartfelt tribute to Dre on his second album, now downplayed Dre's impact on his career and life as if it were insignificant. I've never had a song with Dre on it and Dre been in my video. Snoop has a ton. M has a ton. I don't that ultimately destroyed Dre's respect for the game. The game's attempts to undermine Kendrick Lamar were another factor in Dre's distancing. Saluted by Kendrick and Black Boy Fly as a rapper he looked up to, the game was present when the torch was passed to Kendrick by Snoop. Look, look at him in the background. Look at him in the background. Snoop passed the torch. He in the back. He in the background looking mad. He's salty right now. He he look he look like he could sneak his ass if he look Kendrick. Nah, why? That's why you gotta watch the people around you. Watch the people around you, man. Everybody don't want to see see you do good, man. You see if you see that this is a first hand take of motherfuckers that do not want to see you do good. You know what I mean? Dog. Over the years, Kendrick collaborated with the game on several tracks, and it seemed like they were on good terms. However, at every turn, the game appeared to downplay Kendrick's skills, whether out of competitiveness or just. And I mean, you nice, Doug. Don't get me wrong. Game you is nice as spitting, but Kendrick, Kendrick's it coming. Uh, he he coming at your neck with that when it comes to the the lyrics. Yeah, I'm just saying that's me personal. That's what I think. I don't know how you feel. Actually, chat. Let me know how you feel. You got winning in a in a uh in a battle or you know saying just put put up the catalogs you know you got games catalog against uh kendrick's catalog because he tried to go against he tried to go against kendrick see he keeps going against people that lyrically will destroy him or the catalog will destroy him you can't go against uh kendrick you can't go against 50 and you can't go against eminem lyrically i'm just sorry you know what I'm saying? It is Jealousy. what it is. Can't nobody in countdown rap game. Kendrick, my Kendrick do it. I love that death. I flew past Kendrick when that was on foot in a Range Rover and showed him how to do it. Don't play with game name. Hardest in confident rapping lyricist me. Once again, the game let alcohol influence his actions, fostering potential problems. Well, I tell you, G Champs, he was uh, he was talking crazy. 
relationships with another of Dre's protégés. This along with his refusal to... That's the joint I react right to, right here. This joint, he was going in. I ain't gonna lie. He was spitting on, on this freestyle right here. I think it was one of the hardest freestyles uh, that came out like last year or the year before that. Whenever this dropped, that's one of the hardest freestyles that came out right there. Stand by uh, the no West kizzy. Coast during Kendrick's beef with Drake contributed to Dre's gradual and, distancing. And I sat there and said that I think he was going at Kendrick. And everybody in the, in the, in the, in the comments tried to say he wasn't. Everybody try to say he was it was it, and I feel like the shots were fired. But I'm gonna I'm gonna post that joint up, and I want y'all to make sure y'all y'all go uh, uh tap into that. Ding. While Dre provided the intro to Not Like Us, the game took Dre's side and was not present at Kendrick's pop-up show that symbolized West Coast unity. This absence raised questions and added to the reasons why Dre no longer respects him. Hey, dang, Kendrick. How you how how game ain't pull up and he's supposed to be not like us. He really was not like us because he didn't pull up at all. He did not pull up. Despite the game's attempts to control his narrative, it's easy to see why Dre has distanced himself. Left the homie on stop. The game has dissed nearly every major rapper associated with Aftermath, and his unpredictable nature has proven hazardous. His disloyalty and ungratefulness have made it clear to Dre that maintaining ties with the game is more trouble than it's worth. And then there's his beef with Jay-Z. Let's rewind to 2011. The game. I forgot about the beef with Jay-Z. So that's another one you cannot... Fuck with the lyrically, and you cannot fuck with his catalog. Game stopped by Big Boy's show for an interview. Big Boy asked him straight up, what's the deal with you and Jay-Z? The game opened up about an encounter back in 2004 at Jay-Z's 4040 Club. The game had approached Jay-Z and asked him how he stays relevant as an artist. Jay-Z's response was, most of you new rappers don't last long anyway, find a new lane. Now the Dang! <laughs> Damn, that's the coldest shit right there, yo. He said, basically, I'm probably, I'm pretty sure, you know what I'm saying, Jay might have been lit right there and just, you know, say, dubbed him, say, get an A, kick rocks, just kick rocks, so he, he would find a new lane because rapping ain't yeah, everybody yeah. and you can't beef with everybody. You definitely can't beef with me, but we leave it right there, man. It's your boy T Money Makes Bucks. Make sure you leave in the chat. Is you think game can lyrically compete with any one of these rappers and if you're new to the channel make sure you sub up make sure you hit the uh, bell and hit the like share stay notified of everything your boy t-money's being dropped man here we have it yo the real reasons why nobody in the industry can respect the game y'all it is what it is i'm out one